All right, so today um, I wanted to introduce um, our new book that we're going to be um, reading together, um, the new class novel that we're going to be reading, and that is um, Maniac McGee. So Maniac McGee um, is written by Jerry Spinelli, and if you do not have a copy of this book, that's okay. I'm going to be sharing it um, and recording my reading it um, to you so you can access it from the video that I'll have on Google Classroom after we read. But today you have a job, an assignment to answer two pre-reading questions. And I just wanted to kind of give you a little overview of this book um, and, then answer, and then you're gonna answer those two questions. And the next time I'll start actually reading the chapters and we'll go from there. But um, this book, Maniac McGee, this was a Newbery Medal winner. I'm not sure what year it won the Newbery Medal. The book came out in 1990 and this is a special 25th anniversary edition that I have for you. And I wanted to um, take a look at the back and I don't know how to get to the back on my Kindle, but I have a paper copy of this book. So let me read to you the little synopsis on the back. So this is a Newbery Award winner. Like I said, that's given to one book per year, one children's novel per year. It's a highly prestigious, um, it, it's it, for good quality um, children's literature. It's, it's, a, it's a mark of really good quality. So this, one, this book won that award and um, Maniac McGee has been in our hearts for 25 years running um, is what it says at the top. And you'll see why that is a pun um, later on as we find out about this character of Maniac McGee. So this special 25th anniversary edition includes a question and answer with Jerry Spinelli and an introduction from Catherine Applegate, author of the one and only Ivan. I'm gonna read you that introduction in just a minute um, to give you some background about the book. And um, hopefully you're familiar with the one and only Ivan. It's a great book. If you haven't read it, I highly recommend it. And while I was um, looking around for this book on Kindle and um, looking at other things on, in, on Amazon, I found that Catherine Applegate actually has a new book coming out called The One and Only Bob about that, the dog that was Ivan, the gorilla's friend um, in that book and is told from his perspective. So I'd be interested in reading that when it comes out. I think it comes out um, next month in May or, May or June, I can't remember. Um, so anyway, side note, that was a side note. The rest of the back says, he wasn't always known as Maniac McGee, but when his parents died and his life changed, so did his home. And Maniac became a legend. Even today, kids talk about how fast he could run and how he hit an inside the park frog, that's in quotation marks, Homer. We don't, I don't know what that is. Oh, I do know what it is because I've read the book before, but we'll have to find out what that is as we read what an inside the park frog Homer is. But the thing Maniac McGee is best known for is what he did for the kids from the East End and for those from the West End. So this book was written in 1990, but it's set in 1970s, early 70s, maybe late 60s. Um, and one of the reasons that um, we read it in fourth grade is because of our the last unit we just did. So it's actually the town that Maniac goes to and lives in is kind of divided into uh, a town where the black people live in part of the town and the uh, white people live in a different part. And so it's kind of segregated. It's not segregated because of Jim Crow laws. It's after that, but um, there was still some separation and some segregation going on. So um, that is just some side note that I wanted to make point and there's something that Maniac does to help kind of um, close that divide, okay? He was special, all right, and this is his story. So let's go ahead and read the introduction by Catherine Applegate, like I mentioned. So she writes, there are books we admire and books we enjoy, and then are, there are books we cherish, books like Maniac McGee. My old beloved copy is tattered, the covers soft as flannel. I've read it for the pure pleasure of the storytelling. I've read it to divine how Jerry Spinelli spins his magical web of words. I've read it because Maniac McGee is, at its heart, a hopeful book, and hopeful books are always to be treasured. 
Recently, I visited Maniac, I revisited Maniac McGee again. This round, I had a botch of, box of butterscotch crimpets at the ready. Really, they're not bad. Along with glowing reviews and children's testimonials crowding my laptop screen. Okay, we'll have to find out what butterscotch crimpets are. They become pretty important in this book, along with some other um, foods. Obviously, it's a food um, that, that Maniac and some other characters eat regularly. And what I realized was just how many different ways Maniac McGee continues to be cherished by so many. There are those readers, the younger ones especially, who adore the novel's larger-than-life protagonist. A protagonist is the, usually the main character of the book, who most of the book is about. Jeffrey Lionel McGee, a boy who bunts fast frogs and sleeps with buffalo. They love the book for its propulsive energy. They love the book for its wild and tender characters. And most of all, they love the book because it's hilarious. For other readers, Maniac McGee is most importantly a thoughtful examination of race relations. So like I was talking about before, the difference in the town and the way that it's kind of split and seg separated by race. Two Mills is a town bisected by ignorance and intolerance and Maniac McGee weaves the first delicate threads to mend that rift. Never simplistic, never didactic. This is a novel that helps readers navigate the darker side of human nature while reminding them that change is always possible. Still other readers, this one included, adore Maniac McGee for its begs to be read aloud prose. It's kind of like poetry. Jerry Spinelli is a wordsmith and an adventurous and playful one at that. The first stirrings of dawn are the apple skin hours. Maniac's tired sneakers flop open like dog tongues. In a brief description of a quiet evening, Spinelli tells us that cricket talk and fireflies held the night. Cricket talk and fireflies held the night. Try saying it loud, out loud. What a lovely lilting cadence. Just six words and there you are with the hay and the stars and the too affectionate baby buffalo and the night music begins to hum. Maniac McGee is in many ways, I think, a pagan to childhood. Finsterwald is gone now, and Jerry Spinelli is a grandfather many times over, yet somehow he manages it effortlessly, it seems, to channel the young lives, to limb the prayer dark seeds of their kidhoods. How does he remember so much and get it so right? The heartbreak, the terror, the fizzy joy, and the just plain fun of it all. Maniac McGee is also a testament to the power of a story. There's a moment in the novel where Grayson, an old man who's befriended a desperately lonely maniac, insists, I ain't got no stories. Maniac begs to differ, and soon the old man tales begin to flow. Happy, sad, just plain baseball. It doesn't matter which stories get told, they all matter. We all, of course, have stories to tell, legends to create, myths to make. Maybe that's the best thing about Maniac McGee. It's a hopeful novel, a compassionate novel. It's a novel that reminds us that we're stuck together on this big crazy cobbles knot of a planet, so we might as well break out the crimpets and share some stories. It's a novel that clearer than Mrs. Pickwell's whistle calls us finally home. All right, I'm stopping um, there with the reading because we're Oh, sorry, there's one more paragraph. You don't have to wait for a prayer, Grayson tells Maniac to say amen. You say it, he explains, when somebody says something or does something you really like. 25 years after Maniac McGee first stole our hearts, readers are still saying amen. All right, now I'm gonna stop reading because we do go into the next chapter. Um, the beginning of the book anyway, before the story is kind of the pre prefix before the story. Um, you have two questions that you need to answer. You can answer these questions on um, class kick. They are there or they are also um, in your assignment for today. You can write them out on a piece of paper and take a picture of that and turn it in or submit it on class kick either way. You're just answering the questions of whether what the word maniac means, look it up in a dictionary, and what you think about a character that's named Maniac McGee, 
And um, the other question has to do, let me see, I will read it to you. Um, that the story is about a young boy who's often on his own in the world and you're gonna write some problems that you think he might face being on his own. All right, so enjoy your, um, your questions and your assignment for today and I'm looking forward to reading with you.